Sainsbury's has apologised to its customers after most online grocery deliveries couldn't be fulfilled yesterday, and that was due to technical issues. Yeah, the supermarket said an overnight software update was to blame, but that the issues are now resolved. Our reporter, Aina Aslam, has the latest. Millions of people order groceries online and rely on them arriving at their doors on time. But many were left disappointed yesterday when Sainsbury's couldn't deliver most of its orders. The company blamed a software update that also affected contactless payments at stores. As frustrated shoppers took to social media to complain about the poor service and long queues, the CEO contacted customers by email. Simon Roberts said he wanted to apologise to everyone affected by the issue. Our teams, he wrote, are doing everything possible to fix it as soon as possible. And he added, we will put a voucher in your online wallet to apologise for the inconvenience. Sainsbury's says it's now fixed the issue and that new orders can be delivered from today. Tesco, which had unrelated technical problems that forced it to cancel some of its deliveries, has also apologised and is back to business as usual. But the technical glitches have cast a spotlight on the resilience of online supermarkets, which are increasingly popular, especially since the COVID pandemic. This is absolutely not what they want. They need to be resilient so their systems stand up to problems because they want to serve their customers well every single day, 365 days a year. So it's frustrating for the businesses, it's frustrating for the customers. But I think in this world where technology is such a big part of our lives, it's something that we are going to have to get used to, that when things go wrong, they will go wrong fairly quickly and with fairly big consequences. Some experts have criticised Sainsbury's for not properly testing the software update before implementing it. Anna Aslam, BBC News. So, what was the reason your Sunday roast wasn't delivered yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> We're joined now by techno technology expert Tom Cheeseright. Uh, Tom, morning to you. I mean, this is the problem. Technology is involved in so many aspects of our lives, but when it goes wrong, it, it does go wrong. Absolutely, and it's you know, very disappointing for those people who are waiting on their orders. But I have to say the reason this is a news story is because it doesn't happen that often, certainly not to this scale, to this extent, where there's so, do so we know, many upset Do we people. know what exactly happened? We don't know exactly. All Sainsbury's have said is that there was a software update overnight that didn't go to plan. For some reason, that caused both the uh, online deliveries to stop and they couldn't fulfill those deliveries, but also seems to have caused some problems with contactless payments in store and maybe even chip and pin. So maybe something in the payment software or the software that connects the orders to the payments. So in the, in the space of the last week, we've had McDonald's, we've had Tesco, we've had Sainsbury's yesterday, all having problems. Some people are going to think, ooh, Cyber attacks. <laughs> but it's not, is it? They've been very clear about that. Look, we don't think so. They wouldn't necessarily say so, um, but it seems unlikely to me. I think it's much more likely a series of coincidences. Maybe they all had to do software updates because of the potential for a cyber attack, because a new exploit had been found, a new vulnerability, and they were all reliant on the same thing, all had to rush through software patches, and so that's what's caused this sort of synchronisation of these issues. But in reality, there's so many software updates going on all the time. It's very easy to build software these days, much easier than ever has been. It's very hard to maintain software. It's a complicated stack of different different bits that do different things and keeping them all in harmony, all running together is very, very challenging. Shows how reliant we are on mm. technology now, doesn't it? It, it? We are, but yeah, then again, we've been reliant on technology for 2,000 years. 2,000 years ago, there would have been people sitting around on the equivalent of the sofa saying, are we too reliant on wheels? Or, you know, are we too reliant on spears and flints? You know, these things were technology at the time. We don't think of them as technology now. In 50 years, the technology for the internet online ordering will seem so old hat that we won't worry about whether we're too reliant on it because it's just like relying on gravity or air. So we, are, we obviously want the systems to be as reliable as impossible. And I'm just reading my little notes here and it's saying that artificial intelligence could help us do that. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that it's really good at is recognising patterns and gaps in patterns. Is there something wrong with this software? And already actually coders writing software now are doing it in partnership with AI. So the AI might suggest bits of code, snippets of code that they can use to solve a problem, but also looks over the code and says, that's missing, there's a gap, this isn't going to work. And so we already run things called unit tests, so test every piece of software before it goes live. We can advance that with AI and make it even more reliable. It um, shows the way that the world has changed, though, doesn't it? That things can grind to a halt so easily 
just by, well, you know, I, I guess some people were paying cash in Sainsbury's yesterday, but it just, just shows how difficult it is to keep things going. Yeah, we're in that transitional phase, you know. Mm. Go back, you know, 100 years and all transactions were local. You know, you walked into a shop with the cash and that was our only medium. Yeah. Now we have this whole digital medium, which is much lower friction, opens up lots of new businesses and gives us access to the world's knowledge and entertainment. Yes, it is flawed in places, it is at risk sometimes, but it brings us so many advantages. It's funny, it's, it's linking really to another story we've been talking about on breakfast this morning is the closure of high street banks um, because mm. people aren't using cash anymore, but then something like this happens. And I'll, I'll bet a lot of people got to the front and they said, well, I haven't, I haven't got any cash, I don't carry cash anymore. Yeah, I mean, you know, I very rarely use cash. I always carry an emergency 20 in my little coin pocket <laughs> just in case of these situations. But yeah, but the, the, the reason we are closing banks is because people aren't using cash. The alternatives, 99% of the time, are easier, lower friction, and they're actually cheaper for the shops as well. Handling cash is very expensive for shops, particularly small shops. And so there are good reasons on both sides why we don't use it so much anymore. But for certain people and in certain situations, absolutely, the loss of cash presents an enormous challenge. Mm. Thank you so much for coming in. It's fascinating. It's really interesting. Thank you. And, and we now know Tom's got a little 20 tuck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so good idea, to be fair. I always, my yeah. wife used to laugh at me because I always carry cash, paid cash for everything. And now I've got, because of COVID primarily, when, when everyone yeah. stops using cash, I've gone completely the other way. Never have any cash. Yeah, no, you're right. I think no we're, all, we're all the same, actually, mm -hmm. but sometimes you just really need it. Yeah. It's been really interesting talking. Thank you for coming in and uh, explaining. And, and I hope all those deliveries, it's all back to normal now, I think. All back to normal now. Great. Thank okay, you, Tom. Very much. Thank you.